Okay, in our last video, we talked about bonding. We said, for example, in oxygen, when you've got a lone oxygen and a lone oxygen, and they come together to form a diatomic molecule, there is this overall slight reduction in energy, right? It went down a little bit. So let's describe that a little bit more. Why does that happen? Where's that coming from? So bonds are the result of attractive and repulsive interatomic forces, right? So First off, what on earth is the force that's drawing things together? Well, if you take an intro, uh, you know, introductory physics and you learned about static, right, Coulombic attraction, what is Coulombic attraction? Well, if you've got two things with opposite charge, let's say you've got two atoms, right, and one is negatively charged and one is positively charged, then we know that they experience an attractive force one with another. They attract one another, whereas if they had the same charge, they would repel one another, right? So if they attract each other, what was that force given as? Do you remember what this one? Uh, so the force, the attractive force was equal to, depends on your textbook, but it probably looks something like this, K and then maybe Q1, Q2 over R squared. That looked familiar, where K was a constant equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. K was equal to 1 over uh, 4 pi epsilon naught. And epsilon naught was the permittivity of free space. Epsilon naught equals 8.85 .8 times 10 to the negative 12. Mm, is that farad meters? Let's check. Yeah, 8.85 .8 times 10 to the negative 12 farads per meter. So that is Coulombic attraction. So if you've got atoms, let's say you've got an anion and a cation, Right? That's what we call the negative and positively charged atoms. We call this the anion. And we'd call this one the cation, because it's positively charged and negatively charged. Right? Anion, cation. Those things, as they get closer and closer together, the attraction, what does it do? Well, as R and R gets smaller and smaller down here, what should F do? F should get larger, right? Which makes sense. If you bring two charges, you know, really far away from one another. There's no attraction at all. It's like they don't see each other. But as soon as they start to get closer and closer, that attraction really ramps up and they get really closely attracted to one another, okay? So if we were to plot this, let's go ahead and plot it. So we're going to plot here. Our y-axis is going to be the force that this is experiencing. The y-axis is the force that these two um, atoms experience one to another. And the x-axis is going to be the separation distance r, right? The interatomic separation, okay? So the attractive force, which we'll show in blue, what should it look like? Well, it looks like a bunch of constants, k and the charges of your two atoms, right? Charge 1 and charge 2, these different, whatever the charges are on these, over 1 over r squared. So it's going to look like something 1 over r squared, maybe something like this, okay? That's the attractive force. So we're going to call that F sub A. That stands for attractive force. Okay? Now, atoms do repel one another as well. Why should they repel one another? Didn't we just say that positive and negatives attract and they come over and they come together? Well, they do repel one another because atoms are made up of the nucleus, which we learned about last a few videos ago, and then a bunch of electrons surrounding that nucleus, right? So the electrons are all negatively charged. So if you have a big old atom over here and a big atom over here, as they start to come by each other, their electron clouds start to overlap, and they call it a hard sphere model because they really do not like to overlap. Now, why don't they like to overlap? It's something called poly exclusion principle. You learned about it in chemistry in Gen Chem. Poly exclusion principle simply said that you can't have electrons occupying the same space at the same energy levels um, at the same time, right? They can't do it. So instead of occupying at the same, if they're going to occupy the same space, then you have to bump up the energy level of some of your electrons. They have to, they have to get promoted to higher energy levels, and that costs energy. That's a, that's a force that it's going to exert on your material. So we're going to draw this in red the uh, repulsive force, and it looks something like this. It's a really strong force, but it falls off fast. So this will be F sub R, our repulsive force. And again, think of it like 
like these electrons just really, really do not want to overlap one another. And since atoms have big electron clouds around them, as they get too close, those clouds start to overlap, and that is a really strong repulsive force. So my question for you is this. If you've got an attractive force and a repulsive force, what's the overall net force on this thing? Well, you could just add them, right? F net, let's draw it in purple. Let's give ourselves a little more room, actually. So the net force... F net that's going to be equal to F A plus F R what does it look like it's going to do in this plot well at small values of R F R really takes off and plummets but at large values of R F A is slightly larger than F R so the net force is going to look something like this. It's going to come up. It's going to look something like that. Okay? So that's our net force. Okay? So the question here is, when will we have equilibrium? When do you have equilibrium? Equilibrium is when things aren't changing. So at what point will things not be changing? Well, we know this. We know that force equals mass times acceleration, right? Something will accelerate in response to a force if that is a net force acting on it, right? So if there's ever any value of net force, right, negative or positive, those things are going to be moving, right? But when it has zero force, right, right here, when there's zero net force acting on it, it is at equilibrium, okay? By definition, it's at equilibrium. So we have a special name for that point right there. This distance right here, that distance, um, or sometimes we just draw this line right there, that is equal to r naught, and that is our equilibrium bond distance, okay? So r naught equals our equilibrium bond distance. So that's the bond length between these two things. Equilibrium bond length, okay? So we have equilibrium when F net equals zero. Okay? So that is the first way that we're going to describe bonds is using force. In the next video, we're going to describe how we do it in terms of energy.